I'm going to start recording this. Okay. So that's number one. So it is, it's an 85 minute test, which is the class period um, that we have. So you've got all period to work on it. I do need you, those who are here, I do need you to bring, you've all got laptops with you, excellent. Um, I do need you to bring a, a computer with you because you're going to be doing it on Blackboard. Um, uh, let's see, so you can use, again, one sheet of notes, front and back, that you create. You can handwrite them or you can type them and print them out, or you can do some combination of the two if you like. Just, I want you to create it. Don't like just photocopy something from the book, um, that sort of thing. The whole idea behind the notes is, well, I mean, it helps you with like remembering certain specifics. And I understand in tax, payroll tax, as well as in income tax, especially, we're always using references. You know, it's very, there's so, just too much information to remember it off the top of your head. And so in real life, we use references a lot. Um, so that's part of the reason behind it. The other part, as I had mentioned before, is to help you study, right? Give you, give you some, uh, some assistance with studying. Um, and you get to keep those notes. So you don't have to hand it in to me, but it's something then that you can keep to use um, like for the final, if you want, if you want to do that, um, or you can, you know, extract the information from it when you create your sheet for the final as well. Actually, the final is open, is open book, open notes. So you won't need, it'll help you. It may help you as well, just as a reference, but you get to keep them. You don't have to turn them into me. Um, let's see. So you can use the calculator that's on your computer if you want to do that i do ask i mean it's a little bit difficult here because with the with the laptops and everything um uh, so if you want to use i've got down here that you can't use your cell phone as a calculator but because you've got your computers there um you can use if it's just the calculator on your cell phone. Can I just you don't bring just a calculator. Yeah, absolutely. Simple calculator is great too. Um, so you can use. Yep, perfect, perfect. Um, let's see. Also, a sheet of scratch paper is allowed. So you can, you know, if you've got problems to to write out. Um, I know Kathy had mentioned. You know, it's such a pain to type out stuff in those little boxes online. Um, you can, I've had students do this before where, um, you know, if it's a problem where they've got to, they have to do that, they've handed me the paper instead of like typing it out in that box because I understand that can be kind of a, a pain to do. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. Just make sure your name is on that piece of paper. And I mean, I'll remind you when you hand it in on Tuesday if your name's not on there. Um, let's see, so no textbook. So just that sheet of notes, front and back, 85 minutes. What questions do you guys have? I'm going to go through the like the review as well, just to kind of point out what we're what the topics are. And you'll see, you'll look at it and be like, oh, that's everything. <laughs> that's everything we did. Pretty much it touches upon everything. But Questions. Okay, somebody out there. Yep, Tammy, go ahead. Um, I was one. Now you download from. If you're a virtual student, you do download a program and are able to test that way. Okay. So in there, what I want you to. So virtual students, what I want you to do is I want you to turn your cameras on while you're while you're taking the exam. You do not have to use Respondus for it. In course content, there is the option to download. Well, it's not really the option. It's download Respondus and take a test quiz. That's for the online students, but I put that in here because I give them five points extra credit and I don't want to deny you guys five points extra credit. So you can do the same, even though you're not going to be using it. Okay, so it just gives you the opportunity to get those five points extra credit if you want to do that. And if you've already, if you've used 
respondents in other classes, other semesters and stuff, you already know how to use it. You probably already have it downloaded. Um, that'll be really simple for you. You just go and take that take that super easy test quiz. The test quiz has nothing to do with payroll accounting. So it's just to see if you know how to use the system. But that's the only reason it's there is because I offer it to the online students. So I want to offer you guys the same opportunity. So it's in, let's see here, course content. I'll pull it over here. Oh, I haven't even got the date on here. I'm sorry. I have to open this up for you. So it's here. Let me make it available. It's it's actually got last. Don't don't pay attention to that date. I've got to change a I guess I have to change the due date on it. This was used last semester too. So it's just this. You download it and then at the. Well, I have to. I have to add the quiz as well, but you just follow the instructions. There's a little video for it um, and more information about using it. Um, but re read all the, if you're going to do this, read all the instructions because it's, um, it, I have a lot of students that kind of get tripped up in this part of taking it. And so that's why I've got some extra instructions there. So it's in that folder, which is now available, but the quiz isn't available at this point. Who's? <laughs> yep. It's me again. <laughs> I'm just not seeing it. So is it in the midterm exam folder? I, I can't really see the screen you've got up there. Oh, sorry. Um, no, it's in its own folder. Oh, Let's okay. See. Yeah, no, I, it's. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so the instructions are there for it. I just I have to post the actual quiz. Uh, the actual okay. quiz. So, so I'm just I mean, clarifying. We when we do the online, when we do it in class time, we just need to make sure our cameras are on. And, yes, exactly. Okay. So you're not going to use Bondus during class time. I just want you to have your cameras on as though you were here in in class. Okay. And now I have a 10 key that sits on my desk. Is that okay as a simple calculator? Yep. Okay. Yep, that's fine. 10 key is fine. So I don't see that folder in mine yet. Is it under the midterm review folder? It's below it. It's, is that what it said? It's right here. It should be open to, unless, wait a minute, let me see something here. Maybe I've got a date on it that's, Nope, should be there for you. You might, you won't see the quiz right now. I'm going to post that. I'll do that after class. But it should says response browser and webcam, right? Yes. But mine doesn't show that. You want to refresh your computer? Maybe? Yeah. By refreshing. I'm going to change the date here. There you go. So you can see the instructions and how to download it and everything. Um, I said it's not required. It's just up to you if you want to want to do that or not. Um, it is there for you. Okay. Other questions, other housekeeping type questions? Yeah, yes, you can take the respondus quiz. It, it, it'll be due by the end of the day on the Tuesday. So you could even take it after the exam. You, go, you get the exam and you're like, oh, I can't believe I missed that. I need a few extra points. You that opportunity. Let's see. Other questions? 
before we get to reviewing. So let's open up the folder here and I will, um, I'm recording this. Don't look at this. You can't see this. This is just me. Um, um, so I am recording this, so I'll post it as well if you want to go over it again. Okay, so this one bit bigger. This is your study guide, and yeah, if you look at it, you're you're like, oh, that's pretty much everything that we uh, that we talked about. Um, so we'll start at the beginning. Um, so those different laws and regulations that we talked about in chapter one, our first really boring chapter, we talked about all those, you know, the FLSA and the, the Family Medical Leave Act and the ACA and all of that stuff. And I don't expect you to know, like, I'm not going to ask you what date was this passed? What, you know, all those, those specific types of questions. What I want to know is that you can distinguish between those different laws. So if you've got a question about, um, you know, which uh, uh, multiple choice question, for example, and I don't know if there's one on here like this, but um, which of the following four laws uh, granted uh, or expanded the availability of health insurance uh, coverage in the US? And it's a list of, you know, FLSA, ACA, um, FMLA, um, something silly like OASDI. You can pick out which one it is that, that covers that. Okay. So just being able to generally distinguish between those different pieces of, of legislation is what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, there is a, there are a few additional questions, though more specific questions about the FLSA, since we did cover that quite extensively um, in chapter two. So um, you know the general things that the FLSA uh, mandates. Like again, if I gave you a list of, okay, what three out of four items does the FLSA mandate? One of them is uh, record keeping requirements on employers. One of them is um, child labor uh, restrictions. One of them is uh, overtime, mandates you know, overtime for non-exempt employees. And then the fourth one is, again, something ridiculous like uh, imposes federal income tax. Can you pick out the three of those four that, that uh, relate to the FLSA, that sort of thing? Um, they are, so the questions are multiple choice and true false. And I find a lot of students underestimate the difficulty of true false questions. <laughs> so <laughs> just, you know, be careful, read the questions carefully. When you're when you're doing it, because I know I mean I I did the same thing when I was a student. Oh, true false. That's easy. I've got 50% chance of, of getting this, and then I make stupid mistakes on them. So just be careful. Read the questions carefully on them. Um, let's see here. Uh, code of ethics. We went through that in chapter one as well. So review that code of ethics that the American Payroll Association puts out the different, uh, different uh, facets of that. Um, human resources versus the payroll department. So, you know, if you're, if it's a, que a question regarding, you know, whose responsibility is it to, you know, generally whose responsibility is it to, um, to put together job descriptions, or something like that. So the payroll department, or the human resources department. Just knowing the different um, the different rules in general, assuming it's a large organization, because small organizations oftentimes the department also the does the, the human resources function. So in those questions, we're assuming it's a large organization where there's you know, 
distinct departments there. Okay. Um, let's see here. The payroll cycle, and let me pull this up because I, I always have students who are like, what? I don't remember that. So hold on just a second. I want to pull up Cengage where that is located. And oh, I already signed in. This was in your textbook, and there is actually a graphic. And I don't know that we really talked a whole lot about it during class. I mean, we talked a little bit. I, I take that back. I think we did talk a little bit about it, but we didn't we didn't go into a whole lot of depth on it. Okay. I hope I can find it. I'll make this bigger just a second. This graphic here, 1.8. It makes the text bigger, but it doesn't make this bigger. There we go. And this is kind of the like the step by step of the the life cycle of a paycheck, right? So where it starts and then where it ends. So starting with recording the hours worked or the units produced, if we're talking about units of production, um, then the payroll department computes the gross pay, deductions, net pay, complete the payroll register, which is then used for all of these different functions. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about with regard to the payroll cycle. So from, from start to end. So again, that's figure 1.8. So let me go back. There we go. Payroll okay, frequencies, we talked about that, the different, the, the main ones, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, monthly, um, in terms of how many are there in a year. So if I, if I give you, I say, XYZ company has 24 pays in a year. What payrolls, what pay cycle are they on? Right? Or pay frequency are they on? Just, again, common mistake, bi-weekly and semi-monthly, getting those two confused. Bi-weekly is every two weeks. Bi meaning two. Um, semi-monthly, semi meaning half um, or part. So twice a month. Let's see here. So what uh, the forms that need to be um, completed for a new hire? We talked about two main forms that have to be completed. There may be other forms that also have to be completed. You remember what they were? Fine. And and what was the other one? It's W-4. W-4, right, exactly. Now, there may be state forms, like a state W-4 that has to be filled out. Most states also have you um, have to notify the, the state of a new hire or those that child support 
um, just child support uh, purposes and garnishments. So the, the state may have a form for that, but the ones that were mainly concerned about that I-9 form, what is the I-9 form? What's it used for? Um, you know, does anybody remember the types of identification required for an I-9 form or what can be used? Birth certificate. Birth certificate. It's one. And then just like a um, driver's license. Driver's license. Right. So one of them has to have a photo because they have to do, there's two things that it has to do. It has to verify eligibility to work in the U.S. and it has to verify your identity. Somebody has a question. Passport, yep, that's another one. Passport satisfies both requirements. It verifies your eligibility and it verifies your identity. So passport, you only need one. Um, so requirements for new higher reporting in those forms. So that's pretty much the forms. Um, keeping in mind that, you know, that uh, other items like applications and job descriptions and, and things of that nature, keeping those applications on file for a year, um, other types of Yeah. Great. I know that's vague. Um, I think I say it. Yeah. Okay, I've got it down here. Um, exempt versus non exempt. So, can anybody kind of summarize? the difference between exempt and non-exempt employees? What does exempt mean, first off? What are they exempt from? All the time is. Right? So they're, remember they're exempt from the overtime and minimum wage provisions of the FLSA. Uh, those are the only provisions they're exempt from. They're not exempt from child labor requirements or record keeping requirements, anything like that. They're, they're exempt from those two provisions of the FLSA. Equal pay? E equal pay? Um, no, well, the equal, equal pay, that is a separate, um, that is a separate people, piece of legislation from the FLSA. So that is part of the, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Um, so that would be a good thing to kind of review the distinctions between those. Um, what else do I want to say about... Yeah, so exempt exempt from those those overtime and minimum wage provisions. Remember though, for exempt employees, we usually think of them as salaried versus non, non-salary, but as we've learned, that's not necessarily the case. Yes, generally speaking, that that seems to be um, what happens in practice, but not necessarily. You can be a salaried employee and be non-exempt. You can be an hourly employee and be exempt. So the, the manner in which you're paid doesn't really, isn't really the distinguishing factor. It all has to do with the facts and circumstances of what your, what your position is, what your responsibilities are. Remember, we had all those different categories of um, like the, the administrative, professional, creative individuals, uh, executives, you know, all of those different classifications of individuals that because of how they perform their job, or if they're supervising others, that puts them into the exempt category, right? Um, and recall also exempt employees, there's no hourly minimum wage, but there is a weekly minimum wage that they have to be paid, right? But that could be for any number of hours. 
they could have to work all the hours in the week. I don't think they'd probably live very long if they did that, but, <laughs> but there are people that work an awful lot. Um, let's see, so that's exempt versus non-exempt. Social Security Act, okay, so keep in mind what is part of this. So we've got the, um, we've got FICA, right? FICA is Social Security and Medicare, right? So Social Security, also known as OASDI, Old Age Survivors and Disability Insurance, also known as Social Security, is one part. And then the other part is Medicare, which is the health insurance part of that. So this is the retirement, disability, and survivor's benefits. This is the health uh, health care part of it, the insur health insurance. Remember your book abbreviates it as, as HI. Just remembering, you know, what that, and also this would be CICA as well. And CICA comprises both of those taxes. That wage base, what's the wage base for OASDI and what does that mean? The maximum for 147. Right, 147. And this is, is it, is it 147 all the time? Every year? No, it changes, right? For our purposes for 2022, it was 147. So for our calculations. And again, that means what? What does that 147 mean? Taxable. What's that? The taxable. Right. So taxable. So, so all the ones, yeah. All the ones for receiving, you cannot pay nothing. Right. Once an individual, and again, this is on an individual and a per year basis. Once they reach that 147, that, and it's only the social security tax, the OASDI, is no longer applicable. Medicare tax, that's to infinity, right? However much you make. It starts at zero, goes up to whatever. So let me just say something. <clears throat> I've got too many screens open here. Um, also recall, we've got that additional Medicare tax, um, which kicks in at what? 200,000, right. So we've also got the additional Medicare. 200,000 plus. Again, per um, it would be applied for payroll tax purposes. It, it's applied per individual per year. Now, when you actually prepare your tax return, it is based on filing status. That two hundred thousand could change. Um, it's two fifty for married filing jointly. So it's very possible that if you've got a couple and both of them are making over two hundred thousand dollars, that they will have overpaid that additional Medicare tax. But that gets adjusted on their individual tax return, right? Same thing with the, that wage base. If an individual has more than one job and each of those jobs are less than 147, but combined it equals over 147, they may have overpaid those social security taxes, in which case they will get a refund when they when they prepare their individual income tax return. Okay. That's kind of a little beyond what we what we cover in the exam. But yeah. So that additional Medicare tax, that's the 0.9%, right? Yes. And that's only applicable to money earned like over 200,000. So if you like earn 210,000, it's the 10,000 times. Yes. Okay. Yep, it would only be the, for the amount uh, over 200,000 that it would be um, applied to, 
right? And it's only the employee that pays that, right? For OASDI up to 147 and for Medicare tax, regular Medicare tax that is shared equally by the employee and the employer. So for the employer, do they, like if you make 210,000, would they just have the normal rate to the 210,000 or do they just like, once you hit 200,000, the employer doesn't have to pay any more, like any extra? Well, the employer doesn't have to pay any more. Are you talking about this, the additional Medicare or? Yeah. So the employer, the employer doesn't ever pay any of this tax this additional additional Medicare tax, only the additional Medicare tax. The employer does not have to contribute anything toward that. It is solely the responsibility of the employee. So if the if the employee makes like 210,000, mm -hmm. like the employer would just take that 210,000 and multiply it by the normal Medicare rate? Yes, so the employer still has to pay the 1.45% toward Medicare, right? But it's only the employee then that has both the 1.45% for Medicare and the 0.9% for additional Medicare tax. Yep. Correct. Other questions? Great question. Okay. Uh, talked about that. So again, FLSA, knowing the um, Knowing the requirements of the FLSA, remember there were, there were four main areas of, uh, uh, of requirements for the FLSA. We've got the overtime and minimum wage, that's two. And then we've got the labor provisions, that's three. And then we've got the record keeping requirements. But remember, the FLSA does not have like specific requirements like they don't say hey you've got to fill out this form here like when you're you're preparing your individual tax return you can't just do it on an excel spreadsheet and send it in right you've got to put it on the government's form well the flsa doesn't have that type of requirement for employers they don't say here is your payroll register fill it out you just have to have a payroll register Right. So they don't have specific requirements about how those forms are put together. They just have general requirements of you have to have this. You have to, you have to, you can choose the manner in which you put it together, but these are part of the record keeping requirements. You have to have these on, on hand. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, the same thing with like, Timekeeping. Remember, we went through there are a bunch of different ways of keeping time. I mean, you can have the old punch cards if you want, Excel spreadsheet, biometric types of, of records, all sorts of different. The, the employer gets to choose how they're going to do that. They just have to do it, right? It has to be done in some manner or another. Um, let's see. Oh, enterprise coverage versus individual coverage for the FLSA. Remember, there are two different ways that employees could be covered by the FLSA. Through the enterprise, the, if everybody in the enterprise is covered, then every employee is covered. Um, if, if the enterprise meets those requirements, we've got that interstate commerce requirement and pro sales requirement as well. And again, there's certain organizations that are always covered, like the, those nonprofits and hospitals and stuff like that. They don't have, um, they don't really keep track of things on a profit basis. So um, if one employee is covered in the enterprise, all of the employees are covered in the enterprise if there's enterprise coverage. But the other way that an employee can be covered is through individual coverage. Right. If they themselves, maybe the enterprise isn't covered, but they themselves, because of the um, their their job, and again, that could involve that involves interstate commerce. And remember, we talked about how it's really difficult to not be engaged in interstate commerce these days. Because just, I mean, right now, I'm engaged in interstate commerce. You know, I'm I'm using software that is maintained in a different state. 
I'm engaged in now it's not really commerce because I'm not this isn't a for profit um, endeavor, but you know that is, you use email for anything you use Google. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, uh, that is inter and it's for profit, that's interstate commerce. So it's really easy for individuals to engage in that, right? Um, it does have to have that, that it involves, like, it, it's got to have some sort of commerce attached to it. So, I mean, just like an employee using their break time to use Google, that doesn't really count um, on, on their office computer. It has to be, but using Google to look up what the, the sales tax is in Michigan, because you're gonna have to, you're placing an order, you know, that, that now is involving commerce. Um, questions on that up to now? Yeah. Is it, is it possible to be, to not be a part of interstate commerce, but to be a, a part of international commerce? Is that like theoretically yeah, possible? Yeah, they, I, um, doubtful. I'm not sure how, um, because probably at some point along the way, some other state is involved in the transaction, even if it's international. Um, I mean, theoretically, I suppose maybe it is, but it would be really difficult. The only way I could really think about it is that, like, one state has a thing that they legalize that every other state doesn't have legalized, and then the only way they can get it is from, like, another country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, what, buying weed from Canada? This sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you're, I mean, it, you also have to think of the fact that you're, depending upon the commerce, that the type of commerce that you're in, if you're using the mail system that's gone through um, other states, most likely. So it stops being international once it hits different states. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, but it's direct rates ship to you from yeah. that spot. But even then, if it's, I mean, you have to think even if it's coming through UPS or FedEx, it goes through other distribution points and then travels through. So, um, anyway, I think it would be difficult. <laughs> but that's a good theoretical question. Um, let's see. Okay, payroll register versus employee earnings record. Again, knowing the difference between those two, um, I gave you that little hint of if it's per employee, it's for each employee and it's cumulative if it's got the word employee in it. Um, it's for the entire payroll or everybody that's been paid and it's on a per payroll basis if it's got the word, uh, if it's got the word payroll in it, okay. But the types of information that you would see and just the distinction between the two. Let's see. Um, one of the things I didn't so um, different types of Hey, I guess it's under. Face. I was trying to see if I've got this. Um, different, uh, whether or not different types of pay are subject to um, Social Security or Medicare tax. So, like, for example, commissions. Are commissions considered wages? Yes, they are considered wages. Bonuses. <coughs> Bonuses are considered wages and subject to those, those taxes. Um, interest income. Is interest income? And we, we talked about this. So that interest income is a passive type of income. It's not subject to Social Security taxes. 
that sort of thing. So the different types of income that are earned income that would be subject to Social Security taxes. Let's see. Oh, somebody had a question. Yes, Lisa. Well, one thing that was talking, going back to the employee record and the uh, register, the payroll register, I understand mm -hmm. what they are, but the part that I did not understand was when they talked about the payroll register came first, and then you divide it up into the little employees. It seems like you would have to figure out what each employee was doing first in order to get the total for the register. So yeah, I, didn't I, I, kind of, part. I know what you're talking about there. I kind of disagree with the, the textbook on that. I don't, I don't think it's a hard and fast rule. I think it probably is, you know, whatever works better for your, for your purposes. Okay. Um, well, then as long as, because the other way makes sense to me, and I was like, I, I don't yeah. see how they can do that. So as long as that's flexible, then that's that was my only question. So, yeah, so. because and I see I see what you're talking about because it's you know if you imagine yourself as a payroll clerk and you're receiving uh, pay time records from employees you're calculating on a per employee basis because you're right. getting those records per employee right you're calculating that out and then entering it and then it's transferring over to the um totally. the payroll register rather than the other way around right so yeah so like i said it kind of it's it i i don't i don't think that there are any that there is any that there should be any hard and fast rule about that i think it should be whatever it is uh, whatever makes the most sense, okay. whatever procedures that that employer has put in place. Okay, thank you. You bet. Let's see. Okay, uh, that form 941, that should be fresh in your mind, right? The payment requirements and the filing requirements. Okay, so you file it. How often per year do, is it filed? Quarterly, right? Four times a year, um, it is filed. How often do we pay? Not semi-monthly, but yeah. So the the answer, actually, the answer to that, as well as the answer to almost every tax question, is it depends. Um, yeah. So it depends on how much is owed, right? The more that is owed in those payroll taxes, the faster the IRS wants their money. Right. Could be quarterly. There is actually an annual as well if it's less than, um, I think it was $1,000. Yeah, it's a very small amount. Um, and you actually use a separate form, the form 944. Uh, but that it happens. I In my professional experience, I never filled out one of those because it was never to the point where there was that, the amount of payroll tax was that low. Um, but remember, if it's less than $2,500, then for the entire quarter, then it can be paid with the 941 on a quarterly basis. If it was uh, between, well, if the if the IRS determines that in looking at their look back period, that your the amount of tax was between owed was between 2,500 and 50,000, then or actually it's up to 100,000 between 50,000 and 100,000. That's the semi. I'm sorry, I'm getting the semi weekly. Um, confused with the monthly. Monthly is up to that $50,000 in the look back period. And the IRS tells uh, companies what their schedule is for payment. Um, or if you're just starting out, then it would be on a monthly uh, basis between $50,000 and $100,000 in that look back period. Or actually, it's $50,000 and above. In that look back period, you are on a semi weekly schedule. But if you have any individual payroll where you owe uh, the company owes over $100,000 in payroll taxes, then they are on a next day schedule, but only for that payroll. Then they go back. If if the amount is less than $100,000, the next time they go back to their semi-weekly schedule. So just keeping in mind that those, you know, the payment requirements and the filing requirements are different. Um, filing requirements much easier to, to remember. But just kind of, kind of try to try to imagine that. Try, again, imagine yourself as a payroll clerk, and you've got to keep track of 
when that 941 is due, as well as all the other forms that are due, you get your state. Uh, we're going to go through unemployment insurance as well. They're filing requirements for unemployment insurance. Um, all the state requirements and deadlines, as well as the federal requirements um, and deadlines. Uh, there are all sorts of other types of reports as well that may be due from different agencies, depending upon the industry that you're in. Um, uh, and then you've got to keep track of your pay schedule, how often you actually pay the employees, and then you've got to keep track of when you make those deposits. You've got all sorts of different deadlines to keep to keep straight. Mm -hmm. That's why it takes if you are if you are meticulous and detail oriented and this is the career for you. If you are a big picture person, this is probably not the career for you. Although it's good to know about it. It's good to know what the requirements are. Um, let's see. Okay, seek a tax. Remember, seek a tax is that self-employed, uh, the counterpoint part to the, the FICA. Actually, not counterpart, but corollary to the FICA tax for self-employed individuals. Again, self-employed individuals are going to pay both halves of those taxes. Recall that, let me see here. Let's go over a little bit here. Do you remember the tax rates? Yeah. Yeah. So remember, we've got, uh, we've got Social Security and Medicare, and we've got the employer portion and the employee portion. For the for SICA, we're going to pay both. Okay. What was the tax rate for Social Security tax? 6.2. Medicare? 6.4. For a total of 7.65%. Same thing for the employee portion. And 12.4, 2.9, 15.3. So SICA, actually, I should put this down here. SICA is going to pay the total amount of those. Okay, just as a reminder, and then that additional Medicare tax, again, is only going to be the employee. And it's going to be, see, I did this differently. I put last time it was employer, employer down on the top and it changes, I keep changing it. So point zero. Nine, well, 0 0.9%, I should say, 0.9%. And again, that's only the employee's portion. So, or self-employed individual as well would be subject to that additional Medicare tax on amounts over 200000 For the self-employed individual, though, it's on their net income, not their gross income. So they get to deduct expenses legitimate business expenses from their gross income before they calculate those taxes. So if they have $100,000 of gross income, but they have $50,000 of expenses, then the tax is going to be based on the $50,000, not the $100,000. That's one benefit of being self-employed. Right? Employees don't get that. If you have expenses and you're an employee and they don't get reimbursed, you're just out with the money. You don't get any tax benefit from that. All right. Uh, independent contractors versus employees. Let's see here. Just a second. Um, so remember the uh, independent, con whether an individual is an independent contractor or an employee depends upon control, right? Who has financial control? Who has behavioral control? Um, we looked at that video that talked about some, a few kind of, I mean, there are changes to that concept, but they're kind of 
uh, say they're small changes. They're not really small changes. They're more philosophical type changes, but it comes down to mainly control. Uh, it, it's not determined by the employer, whether the, uh, or by the company, whether or not somebody is an independent contractor or an employee. It's not determined by the worker, whether they're a independent contractor or employee. It's determined by the facts and circumstances of how they do their work, where they do their work, when they do their work, and mainly who has control over those choices. Okay. Um, what's the minimum wage? 725. There you go, 725, good deal. Um, along with the, sorry, along with the new hire uh, stuff, job descriptions, what types of, of things are included in job descriptions as well. So what would you need to have with, uh, included in a job description? Let's see. Requirements. Is that Lisa? Requirements, like educational requirements or yeah. requirements? Yeah, that might be one of the things, absolutely. Educational requirements. Um, would be one. Experience. Let me see if there's anything else. So when do we pay overtime? After 40 hours. After 40 hours in a work week. Right. <laughs> Sorry. That was very big. That was very big. Um, right. Do you get overtime pay for work on Sunday? You're not guaranteed overtime pay for work on Sunday. Holidays? No. no. You're not guaranteed. Exactly. You might work for an employer that yeah, does. <laughs> yeah. That does give you that. Um, I think my daughter and her husband work at principal. And I know that if they work the day after Thanksgiving, like if they work six hours, they get paid for eight hours. So even though it's it's not a requirement, but of course it's it's how they encourage how they get people to come in the day after Thanksgiving is giving them some extra money. Because at so, the same time, you're not, you know, if you don't want to go, you just don't go. Exactly. Right? Oh. Exactly. You can you can forfeit the the additional income. Um, let's see. That. Okay, um, minimum wage, a uh, tip, tipping, everybody's favorite. So if an employee uh, receives $15 of tips in a month, do they have to report that? No. If they receive $200 of tips. <laughs> in a month. Two hundred dollars in a year, maybe not. No, in a month. It's based on a monthly because they could. Right. I mean, they could get. You know, they could have ten dollars in eleven months, and then one month where it's ninety dollars, and then they don't have to report it those eleven months, but the twelfth month they do. Right. Let's see. And those are so those are considered wages and have to be reported. So remember the um, back to let's see, do we have to have, I should add a category in there. Um, kind of defining what wages are. Um, remember, we, we talked about lodging and meals, and it would be considered wages to the employee if it's for the employee's convenience. If it's for the employer's convenience, then it is not considered wages and then would not be added to their taxable um, income. 
right? So it all has to do with who is it for? Who is it conveniencing? If it's, if it's conveniencing the employer, it's not taxable. If it's conveniencing the employee, it is taxable. There is a problem that asks you to calculate overtime. Well, total wages, and there is overtime involved. Um, There's also a problem that asks you to calculate the amount of Social Security and Medicare taxes to withhold from a paycheck, giving you all the information about year to date and all that stuff. Let's see. Questions? How many questions are in the. So there are 35 questions. It include, that includes a couple of extra credit questions. And out of those, how many are uh, calculations? Do you have an idea on? Just to make sure how much I have to study with the company. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say less than five. So they're mostly conceptual. are also multiple choice or we have to write the number so they are oh so they're multiple choice except for there are a couple of calculation ones where you have to where you have to enter it in and the ones that are calculation i do ask you to show your work so again you've either got a space where you can show it here or if you want to do it by hand I, I guess I would ask you if you if you're going to do it by hand to in the answer say I'm I'm turning this turning in that sheet so that I know to look for it and you know so that I can match it up. Does that make sense? If we miss just one cent. Uh... So the so the calculation ones how I how I grade them. I mean, there are multiple points for each of these questions. Um, I will take off points if you don't show your work. So I don't, if you just give me a number, you're not going to get full points for that. You get, um, you probably get half of the points if you get it right, right? If you get that, that question right. Um, if you, so to get it, I mean, to get the full points, you need to get it right and you need to show your work. Um, if you, so it, it behooves you, even if you get the question wrong, it is beneficial to you to show me your work because I will, I can, then I can see where you went wrong and I will kind of judge the point reduction based on that. Like if you got, if you got the, 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 you got the question right, but you just did the math wrong, like you transposed a number, which you've seen me do several times, um, you know, stuff like that. I'm going to give you partial credit for that because you understood the concept. Is that? So in the exam, there will be a camera, right? So, we just... so the exam, 
no, there will not be a camera. It will, will be me. You'll be here. And okay. It'll be me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so make sure you come. <laughs> Other questions? Or did that answer your question? Yes. You know. uh -huh. yeah, my question would be uh, <clears throat> for two or four, how many percent of maths? How many percent? So, how many? Points if you yeah. Two and four, so how many points? These are questions for us to know how much we have to be yeah, like two and four, no, this So how many, say that again, not so really understood. Two and four, like if you give a, like a homework or essay, assessment at home, the first one is 60 point and the second one, two and four is 15 points. So for this exam. Okay, so, so two and four. So how are they? How is? What's the point distribution yeah. for what for each of the questions? Okay, let me go back in. So the total points are 125. They said there are also a couple of extra credit points. Um, the true false questions, there are 16 of them. There are two and a half, they're two and a half points each. Uh, the multiple choice questions are five points each. And there are 16. There's 17 of those. Let's see if I get the math right. And then the extra credit questions, there are two extra credit questions. There are five points each extra credit. So kind of the equivalent of the multiple choice. Other questions? Um, what chapter is um, uh, um, to work on the problem about Medicare and Social Security? Is it in chapter two? Yeah. Medicare and Social Security? Like the calculations? That was chapter three. Or are you talking, are you, if you're on talking about exam, hmm? on the exam, you said there's two problems that we have to um, solve the calculation, which is the overtime, and the other one was. So we have to do oh, oh, I'm sorry. So that was, so that one would be related to chapter, what you learned in chapter three. Mm -hmm. Other questions? All right. Does anybody have any homework questions? No? Yeah. 37. 37. Okay. Hold on a second.
Okay. Several parts to this. Is there one part in particular that? So total wages, monthly and hourly wage schedule. No employees are due overtime pay. Compute for the last monthly pay of the year. All right. So if this is monthly, nobody's going to be over that 147 because the highest highest pay is 5,000 a month. So that'd be $60,000 a year. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, Was there a, one particular employee that you were stuck up, stuck on, or? No, I just, I went back through it and I just realized I misinterpreted it. Oh, okay. I like, I took the, I thought the total monthly payroll stuff was the, um, how much, like how much they were earning in a month. And then I thought I had to multiply that by 12. Oh, gotcha. No, this is just for the, the pay period and they said so none of these hours are overtime so you don't have to worry about that just straight multiplication there all right other questions yeah, yeah i'm going to make sure for worksheet because i have a lot of note that's i'm doing for myself to remember all kind of thing so mm -hmm. i want to make copy bring here, I want to tackle my because I want to put in my computer, I'm put in my book, so I want to grab my book or what I want to do for because you says you can bring your note sheet. You can bring your note sheet, you, one, right? One sheet, front and front and back. One sheet. <laughs> so condense it. I heard your notes, so I was like, um, yeah, what, yeah. So it's, I can put everything. Uh, you know, there. a good tip. Uh, scan in with your phone or uh, copy the text, and then yeah. you will keep everything. <laughs> and one sheet. Yeah. yeah okay. If you have really good vision, it makes it easier. Yeah. <laughs> but you can use both sides. Yeah. Thirty-one. Thirty-one or or twenty. Twenty-one. Okay, so Rachel Lopez paid a semi-monthly salary of $9,000, compute the amount of FICA taxes that should be withheld from her 9th, 17th, and 23rd paycheck. Okay, so do you get the 9th paycheck or which one? Are you hung up on all of it or? Yes, uh, yeah. Okay. So remember, so she's paid $9,000 a year. So first thing you kind of want to do, is she going to reach that OASDI amount? So 9,000 times 12, oh, it's heavy monthly, sorry. 9,000 times 24, she makes $216,000 a year. Okay, so at some point, she's going to reach the, uh, the 147, OSDI, and at some point, she's going to be over the 200,000. So she's going to be subject to additional Medicare tax as well. We need to figure out exactly when that happens. Um, so remember what we can do here. So we're going to multiply. So this is the ninth paycheck. We're, we want to see year to date immediately before what her earnings were. So for the ninth paycheck, let's go, let's figure out up to eight. So 72,000, right? All right. So she's nowhere near the 147. So we don't, this ninth paycheck, once we add that on, she's not going to exceed the the 147 because here's her ninth paycheck 
and it's going to be 81. All right, so that one's relatively straightforward. So we'll take the $9,000 times, and is this just the, yeah, withheld. So 558. I should probably do the practice one, so I'm not giving you guys the answers. 9,000 times, what's the rate for Medicare? Zero, one, four, five. Yes. All right. Easy. All right. Let's look at the 17th paycheck. Okay. So that times 17, or actually times 16, where she was before. 144. 144? All right, remember I gave you those steps that you could follow that are in the um, are in course content there. So the next paycheck is we'll find out if we're gonna if she's gonna be over. All right, so she's only has three thousand dollars more. I could have done that in my head. I'm just Showing purposes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so she's got three thousand dollars more that she can earn in order, and that is subject to social security tax. But anything over that is not going to be subject to social security tax. So let's look at those steps that I put in here. Under the videos, lectures, and resources, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Okay. So under chapter three, videos, lectures, and resources, there are the steps to calculate the current period FICA. So calculate the prior period year to date salary up to the current pay, which is what we did here, 144. Calculate the OASDI wage base minus the prior period year-to-date salary. If the result is zero or negative, there's no OASDI. So if we were to do that for the, the prior one, it would have been the, um, wait, that's not right. Then there is no, oh, then there is no OASDI during this pay. Um, if it's greater than zero, continue to step three. So remember the last one we had was 72. 72,000, 147 minus the 72,000, we have a huge number, right? We would have to go on to step three. Um, we do have to go on to step three in this one as well. Calculate current period OASDI, multiply the OASDI tax rate by the smaller of that result 3,000 or the current period total wages. So in that previous example, we would have taken 147, minus 72 to get whatever that is, um, which is higher than the $9,000 current wages. So we would have taken the full, we just take the full 9,000, which is what we do. So here we're gonna take the result in step two, one, two, step three, result in step two is we're comparing this versus the current period wages. So this is smaller. So we're going to take the 3,000 times 6.2%. 186. This is our OSDI. How do we calculate then? Well, let's see. 
Then to calculate the Medicare tax liability, there's step four, we're going to take the full amount, right? 9,000 times 1.45%. This is the Medicare. The last one is the more difficult one, of course. Let's see. <clears throat> So for her 17th paycheck, the OISDI is 186. Medicare, same amount. Okay, let's do this for the 23rd paycheck. 23rd paycheck, obviously, we're also going to encounter some additional Medicare tax, right? But let's use our steps to calculate the oops, HI. All right, so we're going to take the 9,000 times what, 22? Because it's the third, 23rd paycheck? Uh, it's the 23rd paycheck, so we're going to take the prior oh. period. Yep. 198. 198? Yep. Okay, well, we already know that this is over that 147, but Let's just, I'll just show you how this, if we follow our steps here. So calculate OSDI. We're going to take the OSDI wage base minus the prior period year to date, 198. We get a negative number, right? 147 minus 198. If the result is zero or negative, there is no OSDI tax during this pay period, which is correct. We have no OASDI tax, so we don't have to do, actually, we don't even have to do these three steps. So OASDI is zero. Medicare is going to still be the 13050, right? 9,000. Now, I don't have steps up here for doing the additional Medicare tax, but Prior period was 198. Current period is she's earning $9,000. So if we take, we'll just try to reason ourselves through this, unless any of you have a method. 198 minus, or I'm sorry, plus 9,000. So the current period is 207,000. So in this period, she earned $7,000. It was over and above the $200,000, right? Sorry, I know this is here. So 198, this was our prior period, plus 9,000 gets us to 207 year to date. So take that 207 minus 200. That's our Medicare, additional Medicare uh, threshold. So now she's got additional Medicare tax. So that's what we're going to multiply by the 0 0.009. We're way over. Anybody has to leave, feel free. Whoops, not 74. $63. This is additional Medicare. So zero for OASDI and was it 130 50 for Medicare. That's not gonna change. All right, 23rd paycheck, OASDI, zero. 
350. 63. Oh, I get that right. No, the, the white man. So this exercise is our exception. Because oh, two, two, six, six, Oh, I see. Gotcha. If her, so they're asking for the 24th paycheck. So this would be 9,000, the entire amount. Sorry. I didn't read all the way through, see? The importance of I know, I know. I think I know what it's what it's asking, and I don't. So, okay. Year-to-date earnings as over 24 paycheck, 216. Her year-end bonus, okay. Her year-end bonus is 100,000. How much is the additional 0.9% on all total earnings? All right, so what they're asking here is, how much in total is she going to pay in that additional Medicare tax? So her wages for 216 bonus, 100,000. So 316 minus that 200,000. 116. Total wages that are subject to additional Medicare tax are 116,000. After you want to learn, you can change, you can up the date because you left for 28, so I cannot go inside to review. Because the date is we put 28 for this assessment. So, all right, hold on a second. Let me see if there's some way that I can. Yeah, if you need to leave, you go right ahead. So are we the only two left? Right. Oh, sorry. I forgot you're out there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So my see. How much, how long is you, are you going to be here? Next? Well, here, let me look at my schedule. Yeah, I'm just logging into the my office. I'm here till like, I got like another 25 minutes or so. Okay, well, I'll log off of here and then I'll meet you in the other room. Well, you can stay here if you want. Oh. I'm just going to log into the other one just so that if anybody else shows up. Okay. I can be logged into more than one at a time. Well, I want to work through. What's up? I guess I should use my mic, huh, if I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> 
I have a problem I want to go through, but I want to okay. talk, talk it out with you, you know, and just ask questions as I'm going along, let you know how I'm thinking to see what I'm doing. Now it's going to take a okay. while because my laptop is smaller than the regular computer. So I have to slide up, slide down, slide right, slide left. So it takes a little bit longer on this computer. But it's going to be number 40. 